Hello everyone, it's Wisteria here. Welcome back to Aesop's Fables. Let's continue, shall we? The Cock and the Jewel A cock, scratching the ground for something to eat, turned up a jewel that had by chance been dropped there. Oh, said he, a fine thing you are, no doubt. And, had your owner found you, great would your joy have been. But for me... Give me a single grain of corn before all the jewels in the world. <laughs> Which is true, they would prefer corn, let's be honest. A wolf and the shepherd. A wolf hung about near a flock of sheep for a long time, but made no attempt to molest them. The shepherd at first kept a sharp eye on him, for he naturally thought he meant mischief. But as time went by and the wolf showed no inclination to meddle with the flock, he began to look upon him more as a protector than as an enemy. And when one day some errand took him to the city, he felt no uneasiness at leaving the wolf with the sheep. But as soon as his back was turned, the wolf attacked them and killed the greater number. When the shepherd returned and saw the havoc he had wrought, he cried, it serves me right for trusting my flock to a wolf. Well, it's just in the animal's nature. What can you do? One of those things, isn't it? The farmer and the stork. A farmer set some traps in a field, which he'd lately sown with corn, in order to catch the cranes which came to pick up the seed. When he returned to look at his traps, he found several cranes caught, and among them a stork, which begged to be let go, and said, You are not to kill me. I am not a crane, but a stork, as you can easily see by my feathers, and I am the most honest and harmless of the birds. But the farmer replied, It's nothing to me what you are. I find you among these cranes, who ruin my crops, and like them, you shall suffer. The lesson in that is, if you choose bad companions, no one will believe that you are anything but bad yourself. So be wise, whom you keep as friends. <laughs> True. The next one, the grasshopper and the howl. An owl who lived in a hollow tree was in the habit of feeding by night and sleeping by day, but her slumbers were greatly disturbed by the chirping of a grasshopper who had taken up his abode in the branches. She begged him repeatedly to have some consideration for her comfort, but the grasshopper, if anything, only chirped the louder. At last, the owl could stand it no longer, but determined to rid Grasshopper, or the pest, by means of a trick. Addressing herself to the Grasshopper, she said in a pleasant manner, As I cannot sleep, liar, I have a mind to taste some nectar, which Minerva, gave me the other day. Won't you come in and join me? The grasshopper was flattered by the praise of his song and his mouth too, watered at the mention of the delicious drink. So he said he would be delighted. No sooner had he got inside the hollow where the howl was sitting and then she pounced on him and ate him all up. Obviously she did. What else was she going to do? <laughs> and then the next one is called the grasshopper and the ants. Mm. One fine day in winter, some ants were busy drying their store of corn, which had got rather damp during a long spell of rain. Presently, up came a grasshopper and begged them, to spare her a few grains. For she said, I'm simply starving. The ants stopped work for a moment, 
though this was against their principles. May we ask, said they, what you are doing with yourself all last summer? Why didn't you collect a store of food for the winter? The fact is, replied the grasshopper, I was so busy singing that I hadn't the time. If you spent the summer singing, replied the ants, you can't do better than spend the winter dancing. And they chuckled and went on with their work. <laughs> I'm not sure what that actually means, but it's interesting all the same. The two frogs. Two frogs were neighbours. One lived in a marsh where there was plenty of water, which frogs love. The other in a lane some distance away, where all the water to be had was that which lay in the roots after rain. The marsh frog warned his friend and pressed him to come and live with him in the marsh, for he would find his quarters there far more comfortable and, what was still more important, more safe. But the other refused, saying that he could not bring himself to move from a place to which he had become accustomed. A few days afterwards, a heavy wagon came down the lane, and he was crushed to death under the wheels. Oh dear, he should have moved, I guess. The cobbler turned doctor. A very unskilful cobbler, finding himself unable to make a living at his trade, gave up mending boots and took to doctoring instead. He gave out that he had the secret of a universal antidote against all poisons and acquired no small reputation thanks to his talent for puffing himself. One day, however, he fell very ill and the king of the country bethought him that he would test the value of his remedy. Calling, therefore, for a cup, he poured out a dose of the antidote and, under pretense of mixing poison with it, added a little water and commanded him to drink it. Terrified by the fear of being poisoned, the cobbler confessed that he knew nothing about medicine, that his antidote was worthless. Then the king summoned his subjects and addressed them as follows. What folly could be greater than yours? Here is this cobbler to whom no one will send his boots to be mended, and yet you've not hesitated to entrust him with your lives. Well, um, yeah, that's kind of true, actually, when you think about it. You know, they were, weren't they? They were entrusting him with their very lives by taking to fact that he had the antidote for all ailments, but he didn't, which is very bizarre. If you're not going to trust somebody with your boots, why trust them with your life? The belly and the members. The members of the body once rebelled against the belly. You, they said to the belly, live in luxury and sloth and never do a stroke of work, while we not only have to do all the hard work there is to be done, but are actually your slaves, and and we have to minister to all your wants. Now we will do so no longer, and you can shift for yourself for the future. They were as good as their word, and left the belly to starve. The result was just what might have been expected. The whole body soon began to fail, and the members and all shared in the general collapse. And then they saw too late how foolish they had been. (laughs) And do bear in mind, guys, these are very, very old fables. The way they are worded is very different. The way they are put forward is also very different. That's why they sound bizarre. (laughs) The bald man and the fly. A fly settled on the head of a bald man and bit him. In his eagerness to kill it, he hit himself a smart slap, but the fly escaped, and said to him in derision, you tried to kill me for just one little bite. What will you do to yourself now? For... 
the heavy smack you, you've just given yourself. Oh, for that blow, I bear no grudge, he replied, for I never intended myself any harm. But as for you, you contemptible insect, who lives by sucking human blood, I'd have borne a good deal more than that for the satisfaction of dashing the life out of you. I do have to say, when it says fly, it may actually mean mosquito or something that bites um, like that. It won't necessarily mean a normal fly. It's just, back then, that's how it was, you know. They used different wording, I guess. And the ass and the wolf. An ass was feeding in the meadow and, catching sight of its enemy, a wolf in the distance, pretended to be very lame and hobbled painly along. When the wolf came up, he asked the ass how he came to be lame, and the ass replied that in going through the hedge he had trodden on a thorn, and he begged the wolf to pull it out with his teeth. In case, he said, when you eat me it should stick in your throat and hurt you very much. The wolf said he would, and told the ass to lift up his foot and gave his whole mind to getting out the thorn. But the ass suddenly let out with his heels and fetched the wolf a fearful kick in the mouth, breaking his teeth, and then he galloped off at full speed. As soon as he could speak, the wolf growled to himself, It serves me right. My father taught me to kill, and I, I ought to have, Stuck to that trade instead of attempting to cure. <laughs> I guess it's true though. When all said and done, isn't it? That's the end of this episode for now, guys. I really appreciate you listening. Um, if you're on my podcast, please leave me a positive review because it does really help. Hit that like on YouTube, share if you can. And if you've not yet subscribed please consider doing so because it does really help. Thank you and many blessings.